welcome back so in the last class uh, we have taken up some of the topics uh, of fabrication for discussion uh, including oxidation and doping like uh, ion implantation and diffusion i told you that we should be just just be basics of the fabrication should be aware to us so that we know you know how the devices are actually fabricated so today's class we shall try to wrap up most of this uh, so we'll go ahead when we'll discuss about deposition uh, photolithography and etching as time permits uh, so there will be after that we'll have a couple of lectures remaining maybe a one or two lectures in which we shall we shall try to wrap up some of the uh, practice problems we can try to solve some numericals and other things from previous years question papers and so on okay so let's come to the whiteboard and continue where we had left in the last lecture so we have done oxidation uh, diffusion and ion implantation uh, today we shall study about deposition i'm giving a very brief you know overview not going into much details deposition you want to deposit metals like say maybe tungsten maybe gold uh, gold is not used so much uh, in cmos process is not used so tungsten for example aluminum uh, maybe titanium and so on metals you can you want to put in many of the applications will need this in cmos fabrication mosfet fabrication you might want to put polysilicon polysilicon gates are used by the way these are highly doped polycrystalline silicon that can behave ex sort of metals and are used as gate metals actually polysilicon you might want to deposit dielectric const dielectric like silicon nitride silicon dioxide also you know aluminum oxide whatever hafnium oxide sort of things you can also deposit this so there are many ways you know to deposit this and technically they are divided into two categories one is physical vapor one is chemical vapor deposition okay so first let's talk about physical vapor deposition physical vapor deposition or physical processes you can say those processes that will produce a vapor of the material it will produce a vapor of the material to be deposited it will pro these processes will produce a vapor of the material to be deposited by heating either by heating or evaporation or evaporation or by energetic ion bombardment of some material so what essentially is happening is that you produce a vapor of the material that you want to deposit and you that you get by basically heating or evaporation or energetic ion bombardment okay uh, this is called physical vapor deposition and you might have say for example evaporation okay you might want to evaporate a metal this is typically no longer used in silicon ic industry uh, because you do not evaporate metal you do something called sputtering and, and, and etching i will come to that and evaporation of metal is typically down in compound semiconductor like gallium arsenide gallium nitride industries will do this kind of evaporation of metals uh, because evaporation does not give a good step coverage what i mean is that if you have a feature like that this is suppose silicon and you want to deposit you know you want to deposit metal all over then it is a silicon sub this thing then a metal that you deposit will not be it will sit here this is metal for example the metal will come here this is metal the metal will come here but this side wall this is called side wall no the side wall coverage is not very good okay the side wall coverage is not very good the side wall coverage is not good so that's why it is called poor step coverage you know the step you will not get the metal done ideally you want the metal to go like this everywhere right so in in some you know there's just transition you want to fill so this evaporation is not very widely used in silicon it's used in gallium arsenide and gallium nitride because they use it in another way called lift off actually and evaporation is mostly used for metals so in a way i'll i'll come to this point again so you know if you if you have this trends like that a poor step coverage will mean that you know you have a metal that comes here and a metal that comes here and a metal that comes here sometimes you might want to get metal here and then you might not get the metal on the other side so you know for better step coverage you ideally want like to have like this and then metal should form like this right so that step coverage is difficult to obtain in evaporation so people don't do it so much but you know people used to do something called e beam evaporation e beam evaporation in 35 compound semiconductor industry still people do e beam evaporation so essentially you you have a giant chamber in which you put a substrate here and then you have a you have a source that you actually you know uh, you, you have a source there you have a source in a metal say you know you have a titanium or aluminum here 
and you use an electron beam that is magnetically deflected an electron beam will come like this and the electron beam will heat up the mag this uh, you know this metal it will heat up and it will melt sort of thing and the uh, species will come here and they will deposit the coat the substrate that is called the E beam evaporation ok. Um, that is E beam evaporation and whole system is under vacuum of course, so the all the junk and other things are pumped down you want to better quality. Uh, but this process is only used in compound semiconductor indu in conductor industry as I told you it is not so much uh, in use in uh, silicon industry what silicon industries also do is called sputtering it is also a physical process by the way it is called sputtering. Sputtering is mostly used in silicon IC fabrication in MOSFETs and other things because it gives you a better step coverage or better you know sidewall coverage you can say better step coverage ok. It is it gives you a better step coverage. Uh, it is also better at depositing layers of alloys right. Uh, it is hi high density of ions can strike the target and containing the material to be deposited. So, what happens is that you have a you have a chamber like that right you have a chamber like that you have a chamber ok. So, maybe I use a different color here. So, you have a platform here this is called the sputtering target this is called the sputtering target and you are using a sputtering gas of course here sputtering gas and then you have your um, wafer here right this wafer on which you want to deposit the metal by sputtering uh, that is your thing right and essentially you have high energy argon ions this high energy argon ions will bombard and will release this target material whatever sputtering maybe silicon nitride maybe metal something it will sputter and it will release and those will go and basically this deposit the metal the film will grow here whatever film you want to do ok will grow here and the exhaust the byproducts of that will or whatever junk eventually will be thrust out. So, high density of argon ions for example, you produce this plasma sort of thing the high density of argon ions that strike the you apply appropriate bias of course, you will high density of argon ions will strike the target containing the material to be deposited and the substrate this this distance is very less actually. So, that you know it is it this uh, this uh, argon species will bombard and will release the metal it is called sputter it is like physically remove that you know and then you have to have this cathode and anode system you have bias them appropriately. So, that the, met the metals that are sputtered the atoms will go and deposit on the film and you have this deposition that is done it has a better step coverage you can also deposit silicon nitride silicon oxide all these things you deposit with this also it is widely used in industry ok this is called sputtering ok. Now, these are physical processes that are used to deposit there is also chemical processes. Now, the be best thing about chemical processes are there they give excellent surface co uh, step coverage excellent step coverage and many of them in fact, are highly conformal highly conformal which means any step you know you can mimic the step very well they are very highly conformal they are suitable for deep sub micron when I say deep sub micron I mean like 100 nanometer 200 nanometer extremely small scale dimensions and also they are suitable for high aspect ratio do you know what is high aspect ratio aspect ratio is this. So, you have a trench for example this is silicon so this is a depth you know this is the depth and this is the lateral width of the trench that you created right by etching or something else a high aspect ratio would be like this ok and a low aspect ratio will be something like this. So, this depth by L is D by L is very large typically you know maybe 10 or whatever it is it's, 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 it's a high aspect ratio and if this depth by lateral resolution is not very large it is very low that is a low, low aspect ratio it is called A R aspect ratio. So, for high aspect ratio sort of this kind of structures you want a very conformal deep sort of a thing with metal evaporation and all you cannot get that with with physical process is very difficult. So, CVD can deposit that very well it is highly conformal because it is a chemical process and it can be used to deposit semiconducting and insulating layers also semiconducting and insulating layers also ok. And there are many types of chemical vapor deposition CVD you can have atmospheric pressure CVD you can have low pressure chemical vapor deposition you can have plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition then there are special techniques like metal organic chemical vapor deposition MOCVD that is used for mostly like semiconductor film growths and all not for silicon so much. So, let us not talk about that here so much ok. Uh, there are 4 steps of chemical uh, vapor deposition actually CVD has 4 steps ok. Number 1 step is 
that you transport it is a chemical reaction essentially it is a chemical reaction that will deposit the material you transport the gas species to the surface. There are many other st steps involved within each step, but primarily four steps okay. You, you transport the gas species the reacting gas species to the surface of the wafer. Then you allow the gas species whatever gas molecules and species have gone to absorb absorb on the surface to and absorb on the surface of the wafer or semiconductor whatever right. And third is the reaction will now deposit the reaction deposits the products chemical products right. And the fourth step is that you remove unwanted products you remove the unwanted products and leftover reactants okay. You remove the unwanted products and the leftover reactants. So, how do you do it? So, what you have essentially is that again it is very simple I mean at least on paper it is very simple practically it may be very difficult. So, yeah, this is a vacuum yeah, you can pump out you can put a pump so as to make an uh, you know pump the things down. So, you have your um, susceptor susceptor is essentially the the platform on which you actually place the wafer you can pla place it horizontally you can place it vertically. So, suppose you place it horizontally so it wafers will be like that horizontal susceptor you can also place them vertically sometimes in some susceptor these are wafers okay these are wafers okay then there will be heating coils there will be heating coils there will be heating coils that will heat up the things right then you will have gas supply you will have gas supply okay. So, essentially this whole chamber can be maintained at low temperature in which it, but the substrate will be heated if the whole chamber is maintained at low temperature you call them cold wall if the whole chamber is maintained at hot temperature you call it hot wall that is the different things okay. Uh, each step in chemical vapor deposition is very complicated in terms of kinetics and thermodynamics to understand it is very very complicated you will have to read multiple textbooks multiple courses we do not cannot go into that. In the basic principle is that when you supply the gas you also have an inert gas inert gas to carry the to carry the primary gas inside okay as they come here they will get absorbed and exhaust out right. For example, silicon silane if you use a silane gas you are using silane gas here that silane ga gas will react you know on the surface of silicon to give you silicon solid plus 2 H 2 gas like that is the gas right. It is the decomposition of silane in CVD chamber into amorphous this thing right. Uh, so, I told you uh, you know this this will come here this will react from the products here and then the exhaust will go away right that is what happens it is a chemical reaction uh, chemical reaction takes place and forms this thing it has to absorb on the surface it is a very complicated process we will not go into that, but this is a chemical process is a highly com highly conformal process and there are many variations I told you atmospheric pressure CVD for example, in atmospheric pressure CVD you maintain atmospheric pressure you can get very large reaction rate. So, fast deposition very thicker films can be grow grown very short time, but the uniformity may not be great and this is used for like low quality dielectric very thick dielectric temperature that you use is typically say 240 to maybe 450 degree Celsius right. Um, you can grow thick high quality very low quality very thick silicon dioxide might be needed in some applications all these things are done right. Then there is low pressure CVD where you have to use a little low pressure you have to pump it down pressure could be range of 10 to 10 uh, 10 10,000 uh, 1000 Pascal this is the low little low pressure in atmosphere. Uh, what happens is that you get the mass transport velocity the velocity at which you are transporting mass is actually lower than the reaction rate. So, you know uh, reaction velocity. So, you get better uniformity purity homogeneity and control use widely used for polysilicon deposition like deposition of high quality oxide or silicon nitride and so on. Typical temperature could be around 660 degrees Celsius for in case of silicon technologies temperature is very important here. Uh, you know what happens in L LPCVD is that you put the substrate then you evacuate the tank uh, the tube then you flow the process gas and increase the temp pressure to 1000 Pascal or so you let the reaction perform and you remove the substrate okay. Uh, so, that is LPCVD. Then there is plasma and CVD in he this is a very simple again a similar process where you have a plasma you also this advantage of plasma enhanced CVD is that it may not give you as high quality as LPCVD this gives you better quality, but it is a low temperature process. So, you can deposit at around 200 to 400 degree Celsius. So, you know in some cases you cannot take the wafer to a higher temperature 
okay in that case you have to use a lower temperature so you cannot use lpcvd then you can use plasma enhanced cvd what happens is that you know this is used for things like for example you want to do silicon dioxide over aluminum metal suppose you have a layer of aluminum metal over which you have to put silicon dioxide now aluminum melts at 660 degrees celsius you cannot use lpcvd aluminum will melt so you have to use pcvd at 400 or 200 degrees celsius so that aluminum does not melt and you can put silicon dioxide so essentially you have a plasma chamber all of you know what is plasma chamber you have the reactive gases there and you have irf voltage cathode and anode to excite that you will have ions that ions will bombard okay the ions will bombard the surface and provide energy and you will deposit the material on the wafer that you want okay it gives you high information high film density chamber can be easy to clean and all but you can generate lot of toxic gases that that should be you should be aware of that okay you should be aware of any toxic gases that are generated in this case so uh, also cvds can be done for metals i told you uh, metal cvd they are not lp cvd or pcvd this is a metal cvd for example tungsten tungsten is used as a plug metal plug for example you have this layer of metal here and then you have to connect another metal so you fill tungsten as a plug okay this tungsten plugs are used tungsten can be also done by cvd so you take this uh, compound of tungsten then you put hydrogen gas heat and then you get tungsten plus 6 hf so there's a you know this is also you have to be careful by the way all these things so you can use cvd for different types of metals also you know titanium nitride and so on so the next step that we should study is photolithography photolithography is the process or the art of transferring the pattern whatever source drain whatever you want to do the pattern has to be transferred to the wafer i told you so you have a mask and that mask will transfer the pattern to the so essentially you have a mask right on the mask you have this pattern maybe source drain source drain pattern tiny patterns you can define this is called mask writing you can write the mask and keep it on below you have a wafer on which you will transfer the pattern so you will have a uv lamp here uv lamp and you shine okay you shine the lamp what happens is that you coat the silicon wafer this is a silicon wafer you coat the silicon wafer with something called photoresist the photoresist is a complex organic compound and there are many kinds of photoresist i'll only talk about one kind for example so what happens is that you can pattern it you can pattern it and make sure that photoresist is only you know so so in the mask for example this is a photoresist okay so for example sorry so this is silicon this is a photoresist that you spin coat you know you can deposit that by spinning and coating it very easy now suppose you have a mask on top okay there's a mask on top here the mask has suppose an opening here and opening here so which means and everything is opaque now you are shining uv lamp 365 nanometer or so some uv lamp so uv will come but it will be blocked everywhere except this so the uv lamp will rays will come here uv rays will come here what will happen is that the photoresist will get softened here and softened here and if you dip it in a particular solution this part will go away rest all part will remain so what happens is that the photoresist will now look like this this part it has been dissolved away this part has been dissolved away because the uv rays came and hit this part and so there became the cross linking of the polymer became soft actually it's a it's a polymer the cross linking became soft you it's dissolvable you dip it in a particular solution called developer which is basic not acidic and then that part will go away so you have a pattern like this so you can now put some metal here or whatever you know so that you can get these patterns you can get these patterns you can also etch away the silicon from here i'll come to etching little later you can etch away under some plasma okay so this kind of thing is called lithography and because you are using a light source it's called optical lithography it's called optical lithography and what is the minimum dimension of the feature that you can write that depends on the wavelength of the light you are using typically you know many of the industries and um, the academy institutes use something called eye line of uv which means you are using a using a 365 nanometer of uv lamp so the critical dimension that you can define will depend on the lambda the more shorter wavelength you use the better resolution or smaller features you can get okay uh, there are many types of lithographies the one where the mask can be in contact with the wafer called hard contact one where the mask can be little bit away from the wafer one where mask you know has many lenses to project the image and all projection lithography there are many ways many techniques of lithography to essentially transfer the patterns okay and lambda if you use a smaller lambda you can get better smaller features 
and smaller and smaller features okay so there are limits and the mask that you use this mask actually is nickel chrome um, so anywhere you know you will have transparent features where the light can come through you have everywhere is opaque this mask is printed separately uh, that we should know photoresist that i had talked to you about photoresist pr profile that photoresist is a radiation or uv sensitive compound a polymer sort of thing once you expose you know it becomes soluble in those areas this type of photoresist is called positive photoresist there is also negative photoresist such that wherever the uv light has shown you know illuminated that becomes become part becomes hard and rest all part becomes soft and can be removed that is called negative photoresist okay so this is in a basic way in about the lithography you can also apart from light you can also use electron beam to define features so electron beam lithography is very expensive and very it can go up to like 10 nanometer or 5 nanometer features uh, you know because electron beam will have better resolution high energy and so on so other things are there there and finally uh, for this you know uh, module you know this fabrication thing the one thing that is last remaining is actually etching okay the one thing that is last remaining is etching etching is removal of a material for example you have a silicon wafer and this is silicon and then you have photoresist you have pattern of photoresist and you want to remove silicon from here so you can actually uh, do a wet etching that means you can dip, dip it in some acid some solutions uh, specific solutions at temperature or you can do a dry etching when dry etching it means it's plasma bombardment okay so if you do wet etching for example if you do wet etching are isotropic so if you dip it in a specific solution that can attack silicon chemically and it will give you like a like a etching like this profile like so it will it will remove like that it will be an isotropic profile like that okay you are etching you are removing silicon like that and if you are using a bombardment then you will have an isotropic profile an isotropic profile you can remove exactly like this silicon okay this is a plasma bombardment okay like just like ion implantation here you are actually etching away the ion okay it's a silicon it's a high energetic ion, ion bombardment that you are actually using this plasma can be chlorine plasma you know argon plasma and oxygen plasma so depends on the chemistry that you are using actually okay so wet etching wet etching as i told you it is basically dipping the wafer with some particular specific chemicals that will attack it is used extensively in semiconductor processing it's useful for blanket etching like whole area etching of not only silicon but even dielectric like oxides silicon nitride polysilicon metals also you can etch actually wet etch certain chemicals will attack the metal and metal can be wet etched also essentially again for wet etching the same thing will happen your reactants a reactant spe species it's a chemical thing sort of thing again reactant spe species will you know diffuse reactant sp spe species will diffuse to the surface and then the second this is the first step the second step is that at the surface your chemical reaction will take place chemical reaction will take place and the third step is that the byproducts will come out and give it carried away okay and they will diffuse out okay so this is how your your film will get reduced layer by layer or whatever it's basically you are removing the either it's silicon it can be silicon nitride it can be oxide it can be metal anything okay this is wet etching is very isotropic in nature it's also dependent on the temperature you're using the solvent you're using and so on so it gives you a profile like a very as i told you it's it gives you a, like an isotropic profile like that so it goes in all direction uh, there are many examples for example silicon if you dip it in nitric acid then it will give you silicon dioxide plus some products and all this silicon dioxide now if you use a combination of nitric acid and hydrofluoric acid right you use a combination of hydrofluoric acid you will get some product like that so essentially you can etch the silicon away in a combination of nitric acid combination of nitric acid and hydrofluoric acid so different materials will have different chemistries that can attack them right so this is silicon wet etching okay then there is dry etching dry etching in dry etching you use high power plasma to remove the silicon from these pockets so dry etching is essentially also called um, you can typically it's called plasma etching you use a plasma high power plasma to etch the surface away it's a process in which a solid film is removed by chemical reaction with the uh, with a, a presence of a excited or a ground space species ground state species okay these energetic ions will bombard in a gaseous discharge and ex, you know enable this uh, uh, this plasma etching the first step is that the plasma will generate the reactant species the second step is that the reactant species is transported by diffusion to the surface right third step is that the reactant is adsorbed on the surface right 
and the fourth step is that the chemical plus physical reaction will take place here. Physically you are bombarding and chemically also they might react on the surface to form volatile compounds and the fifth step is that the volatile compounds are pumped out. Volatile compounds are pumped out and they are you know that is done that is done basically that is what happens in plasma matching. So, plasma etching has a combination of both physical and chemical in a way because you are using a high power plasma you can sputter them physically away. So, it is also called sputter etching and the physical component is called sputter etching that gives you the anisotropic component uh, of the of the etch at very high energy ions bombard the surface at high speed to give you an isotropic profile, but it has poor etch selectivity which means if you have suppose, suppose layer A and some another layer B suppose this is a uh, silicon nitride layer and then this is silicon dioxide layer because it is not chemist you know if you use a sputter etching physical and you bombard very high energy then they will not select anything they will just etch everything away okay which means you are not able to you not do not know actually which layer is etch, etched and who, everything is etched here whether it is silicon nitride or silicon oxide everything will be etched away to a particular depth that you want okay it does not have this this is called etch selectivity in wet etching for example you might use a compound that might only attack silicon nitride but not attack silicon oxide. So, in that case in wet etching no matter what you do you will essentially get like a wet etching like that you will not attack silicon oxide because you are using a particular chemical uh, you know species or a chemical reactant. But in dry etching if you have very high power plasma it will etch to everything it will give you an anisotropic profile this will give you a non-anisotropic profile. But the etch selectivity is very low in uh, dry etching. So, you also need to add a another degree called chemical degree. So, you also want to have that there is a chemical process that is in combination with the physical process to give you better anisotropy at the same time it gives you better etch selectivity also ok. So, that kind of things are used typically these processes we call them reactive ion etching RIE and you might have inductively coupled plasma that you might add called ICP RIE to give a better degree of freedom in etching the you know the, the materials away. Uh, so, it is chambers this plasma chambers will be there where you have an anode and a cathode it is like a parallel plate system that you know you have an RF capacitive couple bottom electrode that will hold the wafer large grounded area low pressure will be used like 0.5 or 1 millitor heavy bombardment will happen and selective area can be improved by proper chemistry here ok that is what it means. And ICPRI chemistry of course, gives you an additional degree of freedom it will also help you num control the number of ions the number of ions that you are using to bombard and also the energy of the ions that you are using to bombard ok both are important both are important ok. So, uh, that brings us to the conclusion of this lecture we are uh, we will end the lecture here today we have studied most of the unit processes that are needed to uh, understand uh, fabrication of devices uh, oxidation diffusion ion implantation physical and chemical vapor deposition the different techniques uh, we have discussed etching photolithography in mass can also on. So, all these unit steps are used in a proper conjunction and a coherence in a sequent fashion to essentially get devices like MOSFET for example, silicon CMOS you, have to, you know for N plus source drain you might want to do ion implantation for gate oxide you might want to do thermal oxidation for some pocket you know doping you might want to do again diffusion or ion implantation you might want to etch oxide or silicon in certain areas. So, all these processes are used extensively and they enable the silicon MOSFET and subsequently CMOS fabrication process ok. So, we are done with the semis you know, fabrication processes. So, we have maybe a uh, couple of lectures remaining in this module where we shall try to recap whatever we have learned and solve uh, previous years question papers and some mock practice questions numericals that will give you an edge and understanding and also I will give you some unique questions that are typically not asked in textbook that we will discuss to make sure that we are in track with the semiconductor course that you have studied. We have not memorized we will understand the concepts ok that is what we will focus on in the questions. We will see in the next class. I will see you in the next class. Thank you for your time.